Is magic a superstition, though? What's the difference, if any, between a superstitious and a magical endeavor? Let's see. Hello everyone, I'm Angela and welcome back to my channel, your online resource for the academic study of magic and magic practicing religions and traditions. First off, allow me to thank everyone who has generously donated to my crowdfunding campaign. I'm happy to say that we are halfway through our target and I'd really appreciate if you'd consider helping me get there. Once I get enough funds to get my new laptop, I'll make a special video to thank you, as I'll be giving a shout out to all of my donors. Now let's move on to the topic, shall we? Today, I'll be discussing with you the matter of superstition and magic. Is witchcraft a form of superstition? Is there any difference between the two? In order to analyze the matter, I'm going to contextualize it by utilizing data from my doctoral field research with the Italian folk witchcraft, which I systematized as the tradition of segnature. This may also apply to other forms of witchcraft in other countries and cultural contexts. And I encourage you to let me know in the comments if that is the case and what are your experiences and thoughts on the matter. As discussed at length in a previous video, the practices associated with the tradition of segnature are quite popular and well-known. And although those who seek help from vernacular witches may or may not admit it publicly, the large majority of Italians are aware of their presence on the peninsula. There is still a stigma associated with these practices, which retain a degree of secrecy and are deeply known only among those who belong to the related communities. This stigma is due to the contrast with the dominant religious system, as well as the idea that such practices are a form of superstition. My work on the field uncovered this recurring idea when asking non-practitioners and people opposed to such practices whether they knew anything about vernacular witches in their area. It's just a superstition, è solo una superstizione, many have replied. Surprised I was even interested in studying such a phenomenon. This led me to wonder how can the superstition be positioned in relation to witchcraft and whether the two show similarities or not. According to Ernest Rice, the Latin term superstitio sees its precursor in the Greek deisidaimonia, which literally means fear of demons. Although at first it designated a devout worshipper of the gods, it acquired the meaning we associate today with superstition around the end of the 5th and the beginning of the 4th century before the Common Era. When Menander used the term with this connotation in one of his comedies called Deisidaimon, which translates as the superstitious man. As for the Latin noun superstitio, it first appears in Cicero, while its related adjective superstitiosus sees an earlier appearance in literature through the works by Plotus to refer to a man with prophetic powers. Later, superstitio became used by the Romans to designate any foreign religion, such as the Jewish and the Christian faiths. In contemporary Italy, there are two main meanings popularly attributed to the term superstition. One is a semantic signifier, while the other is a justification. Superstition can mean an irrational fear, not associated to imminent tangible threats, which result in performing acts and gestures believed to ward off misfortune and propitiate 
luck. Another popular use of the term among Italians is the one that I will define as a justification of activities which do not fit into the dominant rationalistic paradigm. In such a case, a person may show an interest in horoscopes, get a tarot reading, or seek help from a witch, and still avoid public scorn by declaring it's just a superstition, to imply that it's just a game really, rather than something the person endorses as part of their belief system. This is connected to another idea which is pretty common among Italians, which is that of non è vero ma ci credo, translatable as it's not true but I believe it, which is a common answer Italians would give when asked how come they engage in practices of this sort. According to field data derived from interviews and discussions, with and among my informants, superstition and belief are two different things. While superstition is seen as a passive abiding by external conventions, irrationally associated with avoiding threats and attracting luck, belief is instead an active stance the person takes, which can be challenged and reshaped through personal experience and even lead to further investigate a person's understanding of the world. So the three main themes underlying the conceptualization of superstition are fear, ignorance and passive conviction or behavior. When such elements are put in relation to the magical practice, they are deemed incompatible with it, for witchcraft is led by active beliefs based on experience and may hence be subject to being reshaped accordingly. Also, witchcraft is employed to dispel fear and threats through active empowerment, rather than by being overpowered by them and reiterate automatic gestures and rites mindlessly. On this note, in Italian folk magic, superstizione is being used as a way to distinguish between an authentic magical act based on a genuinely orally transmitted tradition and a groundless conviction which is believed to be both false and alien to what the tradition of segnature encompasses. It is very common within these communities as my field data confirms, for someone to ask a healer or a witch whether an act or a gesture they may have heard of falls under the realm of the segnature. For instance, they often inquire about popularly known superstitions, such as whether it is true that the four-leaf clover brings luck or that a black cat crossing your way leads to misfortune. To such questions, the answer is usually that's only a superstition, an ignorant false conviction. It's not a segnature. For the Italian vernacular witches, superstition becomes then an evaluating trope, a way of delineating the boundaries of what is versus what is not a segnatura. This appears especially useful in the realm of folk magic, which is strongly linked to the cultural framework and the folklore of the local area. Easily mistakable as superstitions unless the healer highlights the difference between the two. And a difference is indeed there, as witchcraft is deemed as an active and empowering practice to better the life of those within the community. These vernacular practices are not mindless customary acts, but traditional rites guided by a power that is believed to have passed down through generations, aided by the help of spirits and deities. To sum it up, 
superstition can be defined as a passive compliance to automatic gestures led by fear and ignorance, to quote my informants. It's an instrument to dispel the fear of the unknown and bad luck through unquestioned yet apotropaic acts. Since it cannot be seen as an actively endorsed idea, it's not subject to being shaped upon individual beliefs, nor is it linked to working with spirits or deities. Its very nature, devoid of a strong commitment to belief, allows superstition to be also used as a justification for people interested in astrology, tarot cards and other such activities who don't want their rationality to be questioned. On the other hand, witchcraft is an active and empowering activity which upholds a belief system purposely endorsed by its practitioners. Even when its practices are passed down for generations, they bear a theoretical, spiritual, religious framework which can be reshaped and adapted by new generations in accordance with their belief system as well as their current times. Before wrapping up this video, allow me to publicly welcome to the Inner Symposium my new patrons, Chance Dixon, David Ilman, Jean-Jérôme Baudry. Thank you so much for pledging to my Patreon. It's going to be a lot of fun. We are just about to get another Zoom call hangout in just a few days so that we can know each other a bit better. Also, a thank you to James Vitale, or James Vitali, in Italian we say Vitale. So thank you so much, James, for your continued support and your donations on PayPal. They are really appreciated and you are a lovely <laughs> follower of my channel. And yeah, I always love to read your comments. So do let me know <laughs> what you think of this video as well. So this is it for today's video. Hope you liked it. Do let me know in the comment which part did you like the most and what you'd like to see next on the channel. And if you like this video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, activate the notification bell so that you will be notified when I go live or when I post a new video. And as always, stay tuned because there's lots and lots of academic fun coming next. Bye for now.